here with North Lake Christian coach Anthony Agresta. Coach, be- you know, just before we talk about individual positions and stuff like that, I'd love to get your overall thoughts on your team as, you know, fall camp is happening for some schools, about to happen, you know, just your thoughts on your team overall. I told you this when we talked uh, earlier that uh, we have a very unique situation. We're young with experience. We were forced to play so many freshmen and sophomores last year uh, in starting roles that, um, you know, they had a year to grow, and now they're back as juniors and sophomores with a full year of varsity experience. So we're still young with room to grow, but we have some experience at the same time. So that is a unique dynamic. Um to our program that um, is is making us very hopeful right now. Is it basically you took your lumps last year and you get to reap those rewards hopefully this season? That That's the desired outcome that we want. Um, you're still going to learn some with sophomores, though. Whether they have a year of playing experience or not, there's still going to be some learning that comes. So um, we're, we're optimistic and um, – we're, we're especially optimistic and hopeful with what we have from an offensive line perspective. We're probably as good there as we've been in a long time. All right, let's start up front for you on the offensive line. Talk to me about some of the players. Obviously, a lot of these players are going to be seen on the other side because of you know just the numbers at your school. Talk to me about who you see in that rotation name-wise up front for you on the offensive line. Well, we have a, a young man that has moved from Texas over that was going to start at his uh, – uh, would, would be a 5A school here uh, as a sophomore offensive line. Uh, Justin Parrott, who is a piece that we never even dreamed about having. Uh, he's moved into the district. He's going to start for us at either center or guard. Uh, we have Jacob Harrington, who was ineligible last year as six foot three, 300-pound Division One recruit, who we did not have the opportunity to play last year. So we have two pieces they're going to be impact players immediately that we didn't even have. So we're, we're, we're thrilled about that. Uh, we have Josh Lazaro, who started as a sophomore last year at one of the guard positions. He's back with a year of experience. And we have Colby Thrasher, who was our right tackle last year that started as a sophomore, who's coming back with a year of experience. So needless to say, um, we're, we're really high on what we could have going on in the offensive line. All right, who are they blocking for? Let's talk about the, the backfield. Before we talk about quarterback, let's talk about the backfield. you got a big hole to fill. Wesley Brown was a great kid and a even better running back. That's a big hole to fill. And let's not forget about Mormon. So we had, Our, two, kids, we had, two, we had yes. two kids back there that were, were just fantastic players and, and great kids from good families. Um, Blaine Gross uh, is um, – a, going to be a junior for us who was a starter in the secondary as a sophomore who had a backup role there last year. Uh, he's a young man that would have made some noise last year if he would have had an opportunity to carry the ball, but because of who he was behind, he just didn't get that opportunity. So I think he may surprise some people back there this year. You know, behind him, we've got Ian Lopez who will get some carries. We've got Jackson Piccone who will get some carries for us back there. So uh, we have some depth back there as well. <laughs> it's interesting because it's it's widely known. Devon Top was here last year. He's mm-hmm. at Mandeville. You know, Duke is no longer at Northlake. So, in theory, you're on your third quarterback. I'm not going to talk about those two. I'm going to talk about who's here and who has the chance to compete and get this job. Talk to me about who you like right now at the quarterback position. And do you have one guy, or is it a a group is going to fight and earn a spot after camp? It's probably more the latter. Um, But I will say this about the makeup of this football team. And this is the thing that um, is carrying me through this most recent transition at quarterback. Um, It would be one thing for any high school program to weather uh, somebody that um, learned the position as a freshman, it was going to be a three-year starter for you to lose to lose that individual. That would be one thing for a high school football team to weather that. To take the young man that was behind him that was doing a phenomenal job in the summertime and lose him three weeks before camp, to weather that and for your football team to even survive something like that would be a pretty difficult task. How I've seen these young men respond to this with the kids we've asked to come into that role 
has been one of the most encouraging things that's happened to me since I've been at North Lake uh, for 11 years, and that and that's saying quite a bit. So um, we understand the learning that has to take place. We understand the self-sacrifice that's going to have to take place, and the kids have embraced this opportunity. Is just another reason to prove why North Lake Christian is a great place to send your your student to school because they are handling this adversity with as much dignity, uh, integrity, dignity, and positive attitude as I have seen since I've been here. Who you t- let's talk about some of those names. Let's talk. Let's talk about some of those names that are going to play and compete at the quarterback position, and we're going to see that last Friday in August. All right, Ian Lopez is somebody you'll probably see back there in some type of a Wildcat uh, role as the season goes, and it's always also somebody who's a good enough athlete to throw the ball. We have a freshman back there uh, by the name of Jaden McCall, who we are not going to throw to the Wolves as a freshman, but has a very high ceiling uh, in that role. Um, Michael Swan has been the starting catcher on our baseball team. Um, believe it or not, anybody who's been around this business long enough knows that um, the throwing mechanics between a catcher and a quarterback are, are much more suitable than somebody that's necessarily a pitcher. Or a center fielder, an outfielder, Correct. yeah. So he has some natural skills that will have to be fine-tuned, but he's also in the mix as well. Do you, in an ideal scenario, do you want to have one guy, or can you see a scenario where it's, let's take advantage of this guy's strengths and these scenarios and then this guy's? Could you see multiple, or do you want one guy and this is the guy? I want one guy, and I want that to be to be the guy. But the reality of the situation is this. This happened to us so late in the process that it's going to have to be done by committee until that one person rises to the top. And that could happen midway through the season or into the playoff, that kind of thing. All right, who are they throwing to? Um, Titus Dillon um, is somebody that can run, is somebody that is a playmaker who showed in spots last year that he can be an impact player. He's proven over the summer that he's probably made the most strides of, of, of anybody on our football team. Peyton Abadie is a uh, somebody who's learned to be a good route runner with a great set of hands. So he's going to be out there. Lopez will swing from running back to slot receiver. Uh, we've got a kid by the name of Christian Weaver that has moved from tackle to a tight end position that uh, is a basketball player, so he possesses a lot of ball skills that you'll see making some plays for us at tight end, as well as the Piconi boy uh, who's going to be playing for us at tight end as well. So You've mentioned Ian Lopez's name a lot and in different skill positions. Am I not? I'm not trying to compare him, but... Tell me if I'm wrong here. Could he be used a lot in the same way that a Nick Mormon was used, where he's just a ball player that we want to get the ball into his hands into as many different ways and as many times as possible? Sure. Now, we never envisioned that we would have to necessarily get the ball in his hands in that many different ways. But, yeah, he, he could potentially be that. Yes. All right. Switch over to the defensive line. A lot of the same faces, just based on what your numbers are that are on the offensive line or on the defensive line as we're going to wait for the bell. to. There we go. Um, who's, who's in that rotation up front on the defensive line? Well, Harrington and Thrasher, who you know are probably going to be bookends at tackles. They'll probably be bookends at defensive end for us as well. But we have a young guy. Here's another freshman who had a play for us, David, last year is Emmanuel Powell. Um, what, what a high ceiling that young man has. Um, short in stature, but... Uh, plays with a lot of leverage. He's strong. He runs really well. Uh, he's going to be playing somewhere in a one or a three technique for us, and he's going to make plays. Um, we have a few other kids, uh, Nathan Mitchell, uh, Nathan Snyder. They've been program kids for the last two years. Uh, they're going to help us out there. So um, those are those are your names. Linebacker, again, the hole that Wesley Brown leaves is, is huge there. Mm-hmm. A lot of running back, the people we saw at running back and wide receiver possibly at that linebacker position? Piconi and Lopez, absolutely, positively. Um, 
Swan is in the mix there, but again, uh, how much time he gets at linebacker now is going to it's going to depend on what happens as the as the quarterback situation plays out. I'm interested to know because I talked to Eric Shooter at Salmon about this because he has to deal with a lot of guys on both sides. What's your philosophy in terms of? Do the kids just have to be in shape to never come off the field, or do you like to try to spot play them on one spot side and then they're the starter on the other? What's your philosophy there? Like, if you had, because you have to deal with this every year. Like, what's your philosophy there of take Lopez for example, just for the sake of this conversation? Is it more we want him on offense and then spot him on defense? You know, how do you deal with having to play kids both ways? How do you deal with it? Right, as a coach. Because yeah. at some point, the kid yeah. is going to get tired. Yeah. You well, know what I mean? Uh, the philosophy is this. I want as few two-way players out there as I can possibly get. That That is the philosophy. As far as the reality of being competitive, um, we're going to have anywhere from six to eight kids at some point playing on both sides of the football. Um, you have to give them some series during the course of the football game where they can get off and rest and rehydrate and do all the things you need to do to take care of them. So uh, the philosophy is simple. We're going to play as few as possible. The reality of it is um, they're going to be out there in key situations, especially you know when uh, defensively when the team has crossed midfield and they're looking to score. You know, offensively, if you're up, you have you know you have some ability maybe to to get them some time on the sideline then, but. Um, you have to spot them. No question about it. You have to. Wrapping it up with your team, before we talk about the change in the schedule for the 2018 season, um, let's just talk about your secondary. Secondary, I mean, you're looking at right now at Bailey DeSales. He's a junior who's going to be a three-year starter out there. So we're expecting, you know, we're expecting potential all-district play from Bailey. He is a, he's a, he's a young man that works hard, that runs, that understands the game. He's a little bit undersized, but... He started there as a freshman. He started there as a sophomore. He's going to have to anchor what happens there in the secondary. Titus Dillon, again, was at safety for us last year at times. Inexperienced, but he comes back with a whole lot more experience this year, as well as Blaine Gross, who will probably spend some time in the backfield, like we mentioned to you earlier, as the, the main ball carrier and be playing uh, safety for us as well. All right. I saw it on your door when I walked in. You know, False River, I mean, I – they're not playing football anymore, or what happened there? Um, they had dropped their program, from what I understood. Then they reinvented their JV program, and I think that's where they are. Right okay, now. and it's a Bruley is, is you know replaced it for you there. That game's going to be in Wolverine Stadium. It is. All right, cool, awesome. Again, North Lake Christian head coach Anthony Agresta.